Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will, the last Jedi. Marcel. Yes. I also forgot to pull up the random card today, so we're doing that right now well, while fine. you do your it's little fine. thing. <laughs> welcome. Greetings, salutations. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in, listening, <laughs> watching, doing it, however you're doing it, where you're doing it. As always, you know where to find us. Things are down below. You're on the places that you're on. I shan't continue. Look at us work. There you go. That's all. All right, guys, so the schedule for today, we are going to kick off with our random card of the day. As always, we are going to then talk about the Goblin versus Merfolk deck. We're a little bit late to get uh, this episode out to you guys, but we yeah, did sorry. do our own sort of testing on that, and we wanted to talk about it. We also want to talk about Iconic Masters, uh, obviously just released this past week. A uh, lot of price drops and things like that that we thought would be important to note, so now is the time to buy. Definitely. Um, we yeah, also have a last minute add in that we'll talk about at the end of that segment. Um, literally moments ago. Literally, I, yeah. I Googled something on the fly and we came we stumbled across something that bears and needs conversation. Needs conversation. That's a good way to put it. Uh, we also have our question of the week, our mm. sponsor, and mm. then our cracker yes. pack. So I don't know if this can read, but I've been hanging out with cats all day and I realized. Yeah, you're I'm really hairy, my friend. Covered in hair. Yeah. It's crazy. Sorry, you, uh, I just saw that. You need one of those little lint roller things. I don't have one for you. Sorry. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's where we are. Okay. <laughs> it's late, guys. No. Yeah, yeah. It's really not. We just are super tired. All right. So Family in Family three, Family. two, one, let us see what we get. <laughs> Kessig Forge Master. This is from Shadows Over Innistrad, so a fairly okay. recent set. Uh, it is a two, one, four, two, one generic and one red. Whenever it blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, it deals one damage to that creature. At the beginning of each upkeep, if no spells were cast last turn, you get to flip it into Flameheart Werewolf, <laughs> which is a 3-2, which whenever it blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, it deals two damage to that creature instead. And then if you cast two or more spells on the, on the past turn, you flip it. So what do you think? I don't know. This just seems... I I honestly don't love this card. Um, I'm... In limited, I'm okay with it. I'm clearly not constructed. There's no constructed viability, no. right? But no. limited-wise, I think it's not terrible. The reason I say that is because it's a 2-1 for 2, which is not great, but it does deal an extra damage when it's on the block. But that's not really what you want to be doing with the red deck. Does that make sense? Yeah, because, I mean, you want to get in for combat damage, mm -hmm. like, two-faced, not necessarily just trading right. for creatures. And that's exactly what it's going to do. It's always going to yeah. trade because it is a 2-1. Um, on the flip side, you're looking at a 3-2, which is more sturdy, and it deals two extra damage to but, creatures, Yeah, which is okay. And, I mean, for two, it's a good investment. I don't know. It's, prob it's probably good. Realistically, though, I don't think you count on this flipping. You don't think so? No, because how many how many times in limited, honestly, where it's so much of it is oh, you play got, creature pass? You got to play turn three. You like, have to play something, right? Yeah. Like, you're not expecting to flip this, I don't think. Yeah. Um, um, I don't think it's a, like premium uncommon from this set by any means probably not i think it's probably fine it's I, okay as filler, i really don't, I, I would I say don't like it, it's not my favorite i think it's a waste of a slot there's way stronger stuff at two drop yeah. in shadows um i feel like it's one of those cards that you would like put in your deck if you just didn't have anything else it's filler, but other man. than that it's like not great it's filler. that makes sense yeah cool i agree but yeah it's it's probably better than i'm giving credit giving it credit for but i just yeah. feel funny about it I just don't like that it's a two one. I, it just doesn't seem to be doing what you want. If it was a one two, honestly, I might. I'd feel, feel a little bit that. better about it. Honestly, I feel better about that. Yeah, it at least could take out some of the lower level mm -hmm. stuff. You know what I mean? I'm. Mm -hmm. I honestly, yeah, I'd be okay with that. Um, yeah. Otherwise, this dies, this dies to a one one, which doesn't feel good ever. No, <laughs> feels terrible. Yeah. And you wasted it because of the block effect. Like you'd rather at least block a two two or something. Yeah. Like a. I don't know you why know. you would block. One, but like if you attack with this yeah yeah yeah, yeah. not a good card one toughness makes me yeah i that's not a good thing um so yeah not all that great although it is a newer card which is kind of nice it's somewhat relevant um nah not really <laughs> <laughs> uh right. all right so let's move into our goblins versus merfolk yeah. discussion uh we did purchase this deck actually technically it was sponsored by grand slam so we do need to give them a say. shout out yeah um, technically, Grand Slam sponsored this, so thank you to Grand Slam for providing Appreciate us with that. the Goblins Given versus Merfolk deck. to play a fun game. Honestly, that was, yeah, that's 
I, I enjoyed it. Did you enjoy it? Yes. So funny enough, this is so we've done a couple of these sort of like intro decks or yeah. dual decks sort of yeah. thing. This was by far the best. I would agree. I like, think these dual decks were I think were better made than uh what was it? The last one we did was the Hour of Devastation intro. The intro decks, the I last believe. dual decks were like the barbarians and oh yeah you know I mean? those were bad innovation and something it was the like storm deck versus the yeah. gruel deck or something wasn't it right. it just mm-hmm. wasn't that fun those decks were okay but it felt so one-sided every game it felt pretty one-sided yeah yeah i think i remember that being right i don't was it not like it was like hey i'm in the lead and i'm just gonna stay there oh, whereas oh, yeah, these right. were a little more like back and forth like they, they were close were. Every time, um, um, yeah, but I think you're absolutely right. Actually, yeah. now that I'm remembering that, yes, these games, the ones we played, were like they flipped a few times. Yeah, it was. Uh, so to just clarify a little bit, yeah. I was playing the Merfolk deck, Not which is a mono blue. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he played yeah. goblins. Um, so play styles are very to our actual play styles. So it was really perfect. Yeah. Um, we went through the decks a little bit. We mm-hmm. went through the list a little bit before we started playing, just to get a feel for what was in there. Yeah. Um. There's actually a lot of good cards. There's yeah, a lot of the uh, Merfolk Lords that are being played in Modern right now. They're mm-hmm. there. Um, also, uh, Master of the Waves, which doesn't necessarily see a whole lot of play, but it is a very good card. Oh, it's great. Uh, it's also fantastic for cubes or for Commander, so great for yeah, those. Um, so the value in these is actually pretty good. It's not mm-hmm. 100%, but it's a lot better than what we've seen in the past definitely so uh, i'm goblins, happy with that yeah, yeah goblins gets like char belcher mm-hmm. um Rabble krinko Master, krinko, Mob krinko Boss, was in there uh a solid favorite yeah of mine <laughs> uh exponential goblins mm-hmm. thank you um <clears throat> i said Rabble master and there's yeah. one more who's really cool he's like the 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 main card portrait of the deck yeah uh, i can't think of the name I of it either. either instigator maybe you deal damage and you put a goblin from your hand. It'll be up on the screen at some point. That one. <laughs> um, sorry, our <laughs> podcast friends. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, I failed you. Um, no, but there was a lot of solid cards in these decks. Yeah, solid so. cards, solid synergy. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, when you when you get to make decks that have been around since, like, Magic's Inception. Yeah, you know, and that, and so that was the thing I was most excited about. Yeah. So the fact that these are two, obviously tribal theme has been magic's like mantra for the past year. Um, and yeah. <laughs> I have to tribal say stuff. that like the fact that it was goblins versus merfolk was a really big upside for me because these, yeah. like you mentioned, these two tribes have been around since alpha yeah. and they've been going strong right. since alpha. Like we've yes, always seen fish good. decks, we've always seen goblin decks. Fish, arguably, I think, better in competitive oh, magic. But there's no argument. Absolutely, you do yeah. you do see their one off goblin decks every once in a while with and pile they're, drivers. They're things like honestly that. so fun. They are fun. Right? Yeah, I mean that's the that's the beauty of it. Is yeah. it's fun. It's synergistic. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a really good way to these decks are a little bit more on the like the nostalgia side of things. You think? However, I think so honestly, but. I actually think these are pretty good for new players. Mm-hmm. Oh, Would you yeah. agree? Because yes. they weren't overly complicated. Well, no, and that's the thing is they weren't super complicated on their surface, but if you notice certain synergies within the decks, right. you can sort of play around it. It's good for new players to really like grasp the reins of magic better, especially the goblins. Like, I mean, it's a it's deck, goblins, people. yeah, yeah. You, it's a, <laughs> you make a bunch of tokens, play your goblin lords, blah blah blah. blah. It's it's so simple and straightforward, but yeah. it's so fun and rhythmic. Um, there are I think two, four, five or six token generators mm. plus Krinko. Yeah. So you know you get you the, have Krinko's command and a few mm-hmm. other things like that. Yeah, two Krinko's command. Hordling outburst was Hordling mm-hmm. in there. One of and then yeah. two other, um, make two token. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it felt really good. Uh, obviously the decks had their own weaknesses, but mm-hmm. um, I think. It took a little longer for the Merfolk to develop the board. Oh, yeah. And Goblins, I, I would say, gassed out. Like, they didn't have a refueling kind of ending. Yeah, you Not had the, one. um, oh, the guy I can't that, think of the card. He puts four, you look at the top four and put any Goblins. Put in Goblins. Hand. And, and there was a, exactly the same thing for Merfolk. There was a, it, they're perfectly balanced yeah. in that way. Um, 
but basically, so to go into the actual game breakdown very quickly. Sure. Uh, we did play full three games. Uh, first game was very close. I actually 100% thought I was going to lose for Dude, a long time. All of the games were. All of the games were very close, close honestly. Really um, but I ended up squeezing out a win <laughs> by the skin of my teeth yes. on that one. Um, so I I won game one. You mm-hmm. came in, I think, more a little more decisively winning game two, although it was still pretty close. Uh, yeah. If I I'm was, not mistaken. I had like six left or something so yeah like, yeah it was still very yeah you know i only i won through burn right i only won because i flipped char belcher that that's time. right you had char belcher which yeah, yeah. we disagree a little bit on char belcher yeah yeah um we'll get into that in a second and then game three uh i was able to squeeze out another win so mm-hmm. it was very close games all around very good games i don't think either one of us would have played any differently i think we did mm-hmm. the best we could i i you know, we sort of, after the fact, kind of go in and say, was there anything I could have done a little bit better mm-hmm. here? And mm-hmm. there really wasn't. Mm-hmm. I think we were just playing the yeah. decks as best as we could. Yeah. Um, Honestly, really fun, though. Yeah. Um, so, Tar Belcher, you want to talk about that for a second? I, I'd, I'd love to. All right, so, go for it. Kevin, what's mm-hmm. like a traditional goblin deck to you? What? So, a traditional goblin deck? Because I don't think anyone... I think you can get so many different answers for this. What's yeah, I mean, my when I think of goblins deck, I'm thinking like pile drivers, mm-hmm. uh, the all the good goblins, and I wish I knew all their names. I'll put some up on the screen again. You know, but Gregory like, Stanley, <laughs> you know, Laquisha. <laughs> <laughs> no, all I the just classic goblin names. No, I mean, <laughs> you're the worst. Um, no, but there are I. I wish I had a deck list in my head, but right, I don't. Right, right, but, right. like, I don't picture Goblin Charbelcher as part of a Goblin's deck. And I get that, definitely. Um, if that was the argument we were trying to get to. I, I think I think you want Goblin's deck to be Red Deck Wins. Is that fair to say? Uh, sort of, Where, yeah. like, you play out your hand the first three turns and then just swing for face? That's sort of what I envision. I mean, that's Goblin's. See, I kind of disagree. So, okay. in my mind... Mm-hmm. Goblins fuels their board with a bunch of minuscule just weenies. Yeah. And then you're able to exponentially increase the amount of them with Cranko. That's like my mm. my favorite way. Oh, well, yeah. And you, you basically swarm, right? You empty the wards. Yeah. So to speak. Okay. And then you use your goblins with like Goblin Grenade is one of my favorite cards. Yeah, I mean that card's Throw fantastic, with, like, by the way. Fling with uh there's, and I'm not opposed to that style of play. And that's super fun. That's just like the flavor yeah. for me. And that's so, cool. So I'm good with that. What you get there is a stable board in that you're safe on board from threats. You yes. can block and kind of swing effectively. So you just get the sink in Char Belcher where you stick it out. And, and I think it makes sense know. to have it in the deck. It just doesn't Definitely. feel like part of a Goblin's deck to me. And I know it's Goblin Char Belcher. I I'll get say that. It, doesn't, it does not feel like a Red Deck wins card. Yeah. Because a four, it's just, a four mana artifact doesn't forward your gameplay yeah i think okay here's my thing i think there was a hair on it i, um, <laughs> I wanted to know it was doing a good job <laughs> i think Who's the reason good? i'm a little like and it's not that i'm mad that you won off of garbage Char- i just want to point yeah, that out well, too because right, that, that could very clearly be connected no, 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 no. um it's just that it doesn't feel like part of that style of deck and i do think i do have that goblin red deck win style thing in my head yeah. i do buy the argument that you can do the swarm sort of idea should, yeah. i'm fine with that but even in that deck list i wouldn't envision char belcher being in there not again not saying it's a bad card in there i just i wouldn't envision here's, it here's why here's why i do okay so with your board being one ones and like yeah i mean you need like some eventually. win condition that you need you need a stronger card to kind of back that strategy i'm up. with i get that you know what i mean yeah. and and swinging on board of course is a great strategy but yeah. if they're stalled I don't know, some crazy clog, whatever the case may be. You need to sink for your mana later. I also think, so here's my other thing. I also think when I think Goblin Char Belcher, I think the actual Goblin Char Belcher deck, deck, which is like the one land deck with a Taiga and then a bunch of other things that just help you play it easily. Right. Which is just a silly deck, by the way. But it is, I guess, technically viable in Legacy. (laughs) Did we not cover that? We might have. I think we did. I think we did. Back when we did, wow, we did deck text at one point. That feels weird. Yeah, yeah I think we did. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I do think Charbelcher is a great card. I, it is a fantastic. And with, card. in the case of me, I like three turns in I a row, <laughs> three lands. I the third one was yeah. just like land. All right, sure, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Um, 
It can whip, but I think it's a great card in that it's so chaotic. Like you, you can win out of nowhere. Oh yeah. Or you can. Tre- it's tremendously fail. It's very on theme, I guess, with like the tribe goblins, where it is just chaotic. Oh, and yes. It's just here. Oh, yes. Here's it's, some it's damage. It's a fun, silly card. And it, it is. I think it deserves its spot. It's I, like a two of, maybe. I will concede that it was very good in the deck. Again, it's not. I don't think if I was building a goblin deck from scratch, I'd put it in. But it's I mean, not a bad card. I think maybe not in my. Not in every iteration. doesn't sure. belong in every iteration, sure. but it has a home, I think. Okay. And well, it does for other red decks, too, I'd say. But we've, not every. We've harped on the Goblins deck a bit. I don't have much to harp on with the Merfolk deck. Okay. Um. So, I piloting it, it felt very much just like a Merfolk deck. I played a few Lords. See, that's funny, because it didn't seem like a fish deck to me. It wasn't the fish deck you would expect in a competitive format. Sure. So, it's not like you're playing all Lords, where they're all buffing, and you're all island walking into the opponent. That's the thing, because um, you turned a bunch of my mountains into islands. Yes, and so, here, that's one thing that I would say was a little bit iffy, because there was a lot of that mechanic. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of it was used technically as card draw, but it was like, here, let me turn this into an island. It's still a mountain, but it's also an island. And, and it's like, other types. this is cool. It'll give island walk to, or it enables island walk, but not really all that much had island walk. Yeah. It was actually more just like the tempo stabilized strategy sure. where you, you know, throw out a couple of your creatures and then play a couple little bit bigger creatures and then hopefully get a Lord to really push them all through. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like Absolutely. it felt like a slow version of a fish deck mm-hmm. to me. I get that. Um yeah, the deck really comes alive when you get lords on the field and that's true for the modern fish as well. Mm-hmm. Um but it does have strong tempo plays which yeah. most blue like creature based decks do. Oh yeah. Where they have creatures that come in and tap or mm-hmm. bounce or um that headhunter morphog whose name I forget. Headhunter is that the word? I don't remember. Something hunter. Guys, we played these decks like a week and a half ago. I just want to point that out. It was like a week ago, at least. It was a while ago. You're right, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Dang. Oh. Oh, that's weepy. Um, yes, but I think it was. A, I think it was. A, it was a fine deck. It was fine. Yeah. Obviously, these are really only meant to be played against each other. Yes. Um. That being said, if you if you pick these up, say, and you wanted to play them casually, even competitively, somewhere. Like somewhere home, maybe. Like. And an epic for my yeah, you know, it's like it needs a little tweaking, and it'd be they'd be fun. I would say they're not good competitively. No, pers- again, they need again, a, they need like a little tweaking, but if it's like it'd be fun. Your your little friend group, and they're like, "Hey, let's play competitive magic," and it's like, "Okay, here's my start." All right, yeah. maybe in that situation good, you're fine, but like good, <laughs> they're good backbones. But yes, that's a good way to put it. They, but they're not like they are not out of the box competitive. Yeah. No, they are not, but they are very fun for, actually, I mean, we've been playing the game for a long time, and I found them to be a very fun matchup. I do, and so it was a cool time. I think for experienced players or new players, I think this is actually a fantastic product. Um, in addition, we plan to be giving one away soon. Ooh, um, so ah, we... goblins, <laughs> Very recently, Ooh. we hit a uh, 1,000 followers on Instagram. <laughs> Huge shout out to everybody on Instagram. Um, (laughs) Huge shout out to everybody on Instagram who helped us get there. We really do appreciate it, guys. Applause for all of you. Yeah, confetti and vision confetti. Um, So, (laughs) um, as part of that, we thought, hey, let's do a 1,000 follower giveaway. Um, So that will be part of it. I don't want to give away what else is going to be in it, partially because I don't know what's going to be in it uh we're Some in the treasure. midst of planning it right now yeah, so this, this treasure token there you go <laughs> that one um so just be aware we do have a giveaway coming out soon if it has not come out already um but i just what wanted to it? point that out uh anything else you want to mention on the goblins versus merfolk no they're fun we talked yeah. about longer than i thought we would yeah we did that. actually and i do want to thank grand slam again for providing that to us we do appreciate it yeah it was a fun time um yeah wink um all right so <laughs> Moving on to Iconic Masters. Uh, this is what has been on everybody's mind lately because well, it did come out last Friday. Speak for yourself. It's been on my mind lately. I know it has. Uh, it's been all over. Yeah, it's not been, you no, don't no. like this, do you? I you don't really like this. You really don't like Iconic Masters. I do Masters. not like this set, no. So here's my thing. Talk to the people. 
Uh, most everybody agrees it's not a very good set. Correct. I agree that it's not a very good set. Correct. Uh, having opened at the point of recording this, two boxes of it, uh, with the intent of opening a few more probably by the time this actually mm. airs, uh, I am not that impressed. It's... Yeah. So, and not only... I mean, we've had the spoilers out for a while. We knew it was going to be in the set. Right. And we were all like, oh, okay, whatever. There's a couple interesting cards and that's it. Um, and even when you open these boxes, the problem that you have is the same problem that was in Modern Masters 2015. Where... And I'm making that connection because I made it to you a lot. Right. The issue is that, yes, there are a couple really good cards. Mana Drain comes to mind yeah, as the Mana biggest... Drain's- uh cryptic commands in there which is fantastic two great cards yes. grove of the burn willows Three horizon canopy or fluster storm five that's exactly my point there's about five <laughs> no there are a few more but yeah, there yeah. really isn't that many mm-hmm. um and so what you get into is you're just not opening any value yes, you that's... open a pack and you open a terrible rare and it feels really bad. Every once in a while, you get a really good one, but it has to make up for like f- at least five or six other packs, which to even make it worth. MSRP it. on one of these packs is what ten dollars. Okay. Um, the so this is another point that I was gonna make. So I'm glad you brought this up. For I heard somewhere that the MSRP was supposed to be two hundred and forty for these boxes. I don't know if that's true. I didn't fact check this. Obviously, they're selling for less than that. Ideally, you mm. can get them around the 190 to 200 mark, which if you're paying any more than that, don't. That is so yeah. ridiculous. You should not. Um, do not pay more than 200 for these. But uh, it's like, you would argue, like, not more than 50. Um, well, no, no, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just, it's not as good. Somewhere, though, I heard that, you know, 240 was the number, which is just ridiculous. Don't ever pay that. But you're just not going to make your money back most of the time. No. It's sort of a mana drain or bust situation <laughs> where you really need to hit that yeah. to actually make it worth it. And out of the two boxes that I've opened, the first box was a little bit worse. Uh, I opened, notably, I opened, I believe, a Horizon Canopy, mm. which at the time was like a $40 card. Uh, we'll actually talk about that in a second. Um, <laughs> I also got a Foil Magus of the Moon, which is about a $45 card, which is decent. That got me up to like roughly the $100 mark in addition to some other stuff. Sweet. Also got Nellish Norn and some good stuff, but it, it's like all the all the value cards are like 10 maybe $15. So and it's like they pay for your pack and that's it. That's the thing is you can easily <clears throat> whiff on a pack yes. where yes. the Praetors are in there and you see them a, a bunch. I've gotten two Elish Norns, one out of each box, which is fun for me because it's sweet. my favorite card. But Elish like, Norn is great. It's a great Don't card. Don't get me wrong, but... It that, doesn't pay for the box. No, there are plenty of rares you miss on. Yeah. Um, and so that's really the thing. With these with the past master sets, mm-hmm. master boxes, uh, excluding 2015, yeah. you had pretty good value and a pretty good chance to at least break even. Yeah, the fetches helped in 2017 for sure. Absolutely. Um, um, and that's the thing. There's, like, there's, there's not that much value. Yeah. It, it seems there's a big disparity, which isn't great if, msrp is again yeah like 200 bucks i feel like that's just keeping other investors newer investors newer players away from this really supposed to be cool set yeah and i mean we can harp on it again and again and we probably will and people <laughs> will iconic no not that doesn't work so here's yeah and this is something that's been brought up a lot we yeah, talked we about talked it about we had it. a full episode just, on it the thing the whole set is full of holes for me and i don't like this But this is what Magic's answer to it was. And it's not even that they answered this. It's that when they released the set, everybody said, oh, it's Iconic Masters. It's going to be a nostalgia set. Technically, the way they phrased it in their description of Mm -hmm. Iconic Masters was it is going to have iconic tribes of Magic's history, like dragons, like things like that. And that's it. It doesn't necessarily say that it's going to have iconic cards, just iconic tribes. However, if you're going to name something Iconic Masters, it better be iconic. Like, that's just... not. It's just not. There's a few really good cards, and everything else is terrible. So, it's one of those situations. And I'm going to say there's not even, like, iconic tribes. 
but dragons. I mean, I would argue you dragons. Technically, is... get dragons, but like shivian dragon is that in there? No, and that's what we're saying. Like that's our that's my argument. Yeah. I would say is that they put iconic tribes. There's angels. There's dragons. There's a lot of good tribes, but there's not good cards for those tribes. There's all those tribes in Return to Ravnica. Is that exactly. an iconic exactly. tribal set? Well, that's too? the thing. Like it just feels like a misnomer. Yeah. Um, so it's really not that great in it's that just respect. A bar. That's all. <laughs> In addition, we do want to talk about a few, basically the top five cards that have decreased in price, mm -hmm. um, which is really what these master yeah. sets at the end of the day are kind of helping to do is yes. reprint which cards. is great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that is one major benefit to come out of this. For, so if people want to get into modern, buy some expensive cards. Now's the time. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I do like that. Yeah, and not just modern. Yeah. Thankfully, with Iconic Masters, legacy we do get legacy well. and vintage play right. out of it. So, Mana Drain is the big one everybody cares about. Originally, the it was roughly at like 200, 180 to 200. Uh, this version, I do want to keep in mind, it is the, the Iconic Masters version, has dropped down 16% since the release of the set down to $85. So, <laughs> it's still a lot, but... I'm yeah. assuming because again we're recording this only a few days after it's probably going to drop a bit more. I don't think right. it'll be a ton. I think we're going to see it 75 maybe. I think that's what we mm -hmm. would hope for. So if you see it get down below that $80 yeah. mark, I would say now's the time to buy it. I know if you're, you know, sort of new or don't have mm -hmm. the the budget for it, that's okay, you don't have to, but I just want to point out if anybody's looking to, that's probably the time. Yeah, and it is only legal in specific <laughs> places, and exactly. it's probably a chase card for EDH players who are really into Commander. Yeah, definitely. Um, other than that, I mean, it's legacy legal, right? Yeah, yeah, so. I believe so. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, Flusterstorm, which was another big one before this set, it was at $100. Only ever printed mm -hmm. in Commander sets, uh, mm -hmm. a Commander set. It's down to $30. Very nice. Now is the time. Uh, again, a legacy yeah. staple. Uh, it's very, very good. Do you want Flustered Storm? Uh, Horizon Canopy, a very, very good modern land. Uh, the green, white land uh, was at $100, roughly 80 to 100 mm -hmm. It is down to about $37. Uh, so it's taken a huge hit. The art on this one is fantastic as well. I just want to point out. So if you're looking to get them, these are actually really good ones to get. Yeah. Um, again, expecting these to drop a little bit more. Uh, Ancestral Vision originally was at $50 due to the modern unbanning. Uh, it's down to roughly 18 So it is yeah. down a lot. <clears throat> um, so this is one that you definitely want to pick up. I wouldn't be surprised to see these at 15 if not lower. Um, wow. Is it just at the rare slot? It is just at the rare, okay. rare slot, and that's why. Uh, as well as Fluster Storm and Horizon Canopy. So nice. Cryptic is the last one that I want to talk about, Cryptic Command. Uh, originally at 30 not too crazy honestly for such a powerful card yeah. however it is down to about 20 right now i'm hoping to see it get down to the like 18 17 18 mark sure. uh down a, a couple more dollars it's just a powerful card so i think it's Definitely. always going to be a little up there but it is very cheap right now now yeah. is the time to buy and that's really what we wanted to talk about was these master sets are perfect for reprints it's the right. perfect time to pick up these cards so yeah. if you're looking to Go for it. Now's the time to do yeah. it. I think, I mean, the strongest two on that list, Ancestral Vision and Cryptic Command, for me, just based on their utility. Um, yeah. And, of course, the accessibility of Modern. Tons of people, I'd say everyone who plays <coughs> Magic knows about Modern for the most part. Yeah. But less and less about Legacy, et cetera. Um, so those cards, of course, are great for blue decks, for yeah. control decks, Ancestral Vision especially. Yeah. Agreed. 100%. So go buy them. They're fantastic. Yeah. That's our. That's my my investment tip. Yeah, investment tip. tip. I don't like giving money advice, but I think in this case it's just pretty clear. Well, I mean, um, if you want to play competitive, now uh, yeah, then there you go. Buy them. Buy um, those. have them in your libraries. Well, no, that's the name of your deck. Your have them in your toolbox. There you go. Yeah. Overall, though, Iconic Masters, a bit of a disappointing set. I also don't like the way that they spoiled it. If that makes sense, I thought the How do you mean? fact. So the way they did it was with the Hascon thing. Oh, yeah, where people where got drafted. Nobody knew what was in it, and then they drafted it, which was fine. However, then we had like a month, month and a half, to just stew on the fact that we knew what was in the set. So by the time it came out, it was like not that exciting anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's how most sets are spoiled nowadays, right? I well, mean, sort of, but it's like we don't normally have not with the such... Hascon thing. Yeah, like we don't normally have that much amount of time, unless it's one of those like leak 
sort of things where and something I mean, actually did get leaked, which we have had before. <laughs> this set, most of it did get leaked. Yeah, so. exactly. From and, Hascon. From Hascon. Uh, because people were taking pictures. I mean, of course he would. So, it's, it's not yeah, cool. I don't know. I this set has been very controversial. We'll kind say kind of a miss. I'll say. If yeah. You, if you were excited about it, like, I don't let, think let it's like. Know. The thing about it is, I don't think it's like. <clears throat> drafting wise or playing sealed like in a limited format i actually have seen it and it looks really good i haven't tested it so hopefully that's sort of one of our plans for this coming weekend but i haven't actually drafted it myself but it looks actually pretty fun on that end i mean which is sort of what it's for on one hand but then at the other hand it's just supposed to be the reprint good set and it just didn't fulfill that most of the master sets are fun to draft yeah and a lot of sets a lot of crappy sets are fun to draft. That doesn't Bears, make them good sets. R to R. Yeah. Fun to draft. Not good sets. Precisely. So I think it's it's kind of unfair to look look at them through that lens. However, if that's all you want out of it. Go for it. Sweet. There you yeah. go. Drop. It. You have a pool of six friends. Everybody pitches in a little bit of money, buys a box. Buy some pizza. Really what you should do is just save go. up and buy an original Modern Masters box. I know that's like a fortune for a lot of people, but my goodness, bucks, right? four to five hundred. But it is but so much more honestly, worth it. You yeah. will get that money back. I promise. <laughs> you pro- yeah. It's very hard yeah. not to. There's with a that lot set. of good stuff. My gosh. Even and that's at the common spot. Yeah. And that sort of ties into this a little bit. There's just no value at the common slot no. at all. In the uncommon slot, there are like three cards that are above two dollars. I'm just thinking of two. There's Thran Dynamo. There's Lightning Helix. Oh, Dynamo. Uh, and then and what then was the last one? Bobble. Bobble. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the Dynamo. I'm assuming and Lightning Helix are gonna drop below that pretty quickly. The and Bobble Helix is only what five bucks. It's like three now because okay. of this reprint. So there's just no value. Like you can get very lucky and get a really good rare or a really good mythic, and that's it. That's all you're hoping to do. Yeah so anyway yeah we've, we've harped on this long enough i think but soapbox down yep all right so real quick let's pick lot. up the other soapbox <laughs> here we go so perusing the internet as we do uh i asked a silly question to kevin so hey kevin is opt being played in modern yet kevin said he didn't know so i was like all right let's find out um I haven't actually found out the. Found out the <laughs> we got today. sidetracked, as we often do. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, there's an <laughs> article from Channel Fireball's website. Usually, I'll say. You about to throw some shade again? I can't. Not at Channel Fireball. Are you kidding? Okay. Me? Not them as a whole. Um, <laughs> there's just a question that I have because obviously this person has been playing Magic longer than me. She has made a career out of it in some respect. Yeah. And I'm sure she's far better than I am. 100%. Monica's better than I am. But. 100%. Yeah. That being said, <laughs> there, was a, there was a sentence in here that got Kevin a little bit. Just Kevin? I don't think it was just Kevin. I mean, I'm a little confused and like <laughs> upset because everything I know is a lie. Oh, um, so man. we're talking about opt yeah. in terms of other cantrips versus things like Serum Visions and Preordain. Come across the sentence, opt is worse than Serum Visions. Okay, we'll set that aside for one second. Yeah. That's kind of subjective. You have an Depends argument. on the deck. Whatever. Serum Visions is close in power level to Preordain. No, it's not. In fact, Serum Visions can occasionally be better than Preordain in instances where you prioritize setting up your draws over digging. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> it's just not true. Like, I don't... <laughs> like. The, okay... If you don't know the You're difference between one? Serum Visions and Preordain, it's the fact that you get to... They both say draw a card and scry two. It's just the orders are reversed. Mm-hmm. So Serum Visions says draw a card, then scry two. Right. Preordain says scry two, then draw a card. Mm-hmm. Explain to me the situation where that would be worse to scry first. Uh, to scry first? Yeah. Give me one example of when that would be worse. <sighs> when you would like to not know what you draw. Um, oh. They cost the same, by the way. They're both sorceries. Um, One blue. W- uh, okay. um, it's just a better card. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, there's literally no way. Um, and to her, se- to the first point, I just I'm a little triggered. I'm I yeah. Guess, it was technically, technically about opt. 
that there's no question i'm sorry preordains better end of story the <laughs> i mean i think that is that's what she said initially like Super Visions is close in power level. Technically, you see the same amount of cards. Technically. Um, the order matters. The order matters a lot. It matters like, like so, so much. much. Hey. <laughs> um, so, I, I jumped in. I'm sorry. You were no, saying about fine. Opt. So, yeah. Back to her first point. Opt and Serum Visions. I, I think they're comparable and that they're cost the same and things like that and mm-hmm. there would both be played in modern however the thing that i think is sort of important to note is that opt is instant speed and yes okay. you don't see as many cards and so there are certain instances where you would want to see more cards any mm-hmm. combo deck just throwing that out there if you're a combo deck you're gonna want serum visions more because you get yeah. to scry and see three cards all together versus just two yeah however when mana efficiency and counter spells are a priority for you uh for instance a control deck uh you'd probably want opt more i would think so because Um, it's not you're not seeing as many cards however you get to play it at instant speed mm -hmm. you also get to do it if you know you didn't have to counter something that turn then you have an opt up uh it just it just makes more sense i think i you know that that's sort of my argument i i don't disagree 100 percent with her point the first point um but I think there's just times and places to use each. So. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I had a thought. You can do it. You can do it, man. I think I can. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, I, think, I think you said everything I wanted to say. I do what I can. I was a little pissed off about the... He, he likes his blue cantrips a lot. So. I do. I like blue. And when somebody pulls crap like that... <laughs> Look, man. I'm not... <laughs> I okay. I'm not actually that mad, no, but like but it's, it's theatrical. But if <laughs> if that is your opinion, someone else out there, or tell us why, yeah. we won't chew you out. I won't, because I play goblins. He, I also monitor the YouTube. So. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, I, yes. Uh, if that is your opinion, let us know why. Um, yeah. I think it's an interesting point to make. I, maybe we're missing something. I don't yeah, know. I still disagree. I don't think like, that we are really. I mean, even yeah. if we're missing something, I think just clearly it's a powerful. Because yeah. like, here's what can happen, basically. Uh, if you need a card in a pinch, and main phase you play Serum Visions, and you draw an island, all right, you've got an extra land. Maybe that's the card you needed, but nine times out of ten, if not. Yeah. And then you scry, and you're looking at your thing. You're looking at your cryptic command, like, Man, Man I, I wish I had that I wish right you were now. this island. You set it back down, sadly. Opt, you say, island, I really need that cryptic command. <laughs> oh, hey, friend. <laughs> like, that's way better. Yeah. And it's never guaranteed. It could be two islands. It could be an island and, I don't know, a bog brew witch. But it technically gives you a better shot. Yes. That's what that's we're looking thing. at. And it's, it's a slim shot. I get it. You get to it. control your draw, which is a, a strong thing. It is. But at, at like seeing more cards, controlling your draw. I'd rather know what I'm going to draw. Yeah. So that's just my take on that's it. That's me too. Yeah. Um, I still I like Serum Visions, but only because it's, it's fine the only in modern. One, that's the only one you get, and that's why I like it. Yep. Other than that, uh, well, you get sleight of hand, but, you know. Um, yeah. Still. Preordain's the best. No. Um, okay. Uh, pretty sure Brainstorm's the best. Uh, and pretty sure Ancestral Recall's the best. But... Well, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cards that you've played, Kevin. <laughs> I've played... No, I haven't. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So we'll get off of that because that's... This has just been a soapbox episode, yeah. really. Where do you want me to put yours? I'm you can just throw it in the closet. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, this has been a rambly episode, but we needed to get stuff off of our chests. <laughs> okay. All right. So, question of the week. Time. Oh yeah. This Will you gotta pull one. these up? Yeah. This was Will's idea, hundred percent. I usually, Aww. I don't really come up with the questions as much as I just make the post. So you've done most of these, but the latest one was basically, what is your funniest commander or EDH story? Uh, and so we have a couple pulled up that Will is going to read his favorites. <laughs> uh. This is one that I just saw. I eliminated someone with Taunting Elf. I want more backstory because yes. that's great. That is perfect. Um, this is another great one. Uh, I was playing with five people. One of them was playing Nekusar, and I was playing Riku with some clone stuff. 
my brother was playing some really janky token copy deck. <laughs> Essentially what happened is there were three Nekusars out at one time. So you were taking 16 damage anytime you drew a card. Perfect. Which is fantastic. That is awesome. Way to end a game quickly. Uh, Jeez. Um, Alpha Graham <laughs> taking control of my friend's commander with mind control and beating him with it. That's dirty, That's dude. Fine. Come on now. That's fu- I would do that. <laughs> Have I, did I do that? No, I didn't do that. <laughs> you were close. Um, I did have the steel stuff, Commander. Um, <laughs> someone played a turn three Vorinclex. Disgusting. Yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, I'm trying to find. There was one the in particular one. that was like really. Funny. Yeah. Uh, having your Aetherworks <laughs> Chaos Warp into a Shieldred. That was fun. That's pretty. Um, good. the one where you copied. He Where used Rite of Replication. Was that the one? Uh, God, it was so good. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> yes, he is, that's right. Uh, the Gisath EDH against uh, Felia. You played a Regisar Alpha, and then you kicked Rite of Replication three times to get 15 Regisar Alphas. Uh, <laughs> Guys, yeah. a lot of funny commander stories, dude. And also, that's... a lot of responses on this one. That was awesome. That's fu- I mean, commander is everybody's favorite. Format, yeah. Right? yeah. Well, it's it's the fan. It's the format, right? yeah. It's the fan favorite. That? It's the it's fun the... one where you do whatever you want. Yeah, crazy stuff happens. Yeah, that's fun. Um, and it just gets better and worse. Yeah. There are no rules. There are no rules. There are no rules. What's your favorite rule? Oh, dude. There's one rule. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, guys, thank you it's for the responses. Fast. Save it, Kevin. No, we're fine, guys. Thank you for the responses on that. We do appreciate it. Uh, we enjoy hearing stuff like that, where it's like stories and you know actual experiences, not just what's your favorite card. Heck yeah. However, <laughs> this week's question of the week: <laughs> What is your favorite iconic masters card? <laughs> That's it. Um, if anybody, oh, I remember the point I was gonna make. Oh, it's almost worth your money to buy singles instead of iconic masters. It usually is, isn't it? It's usually not, more not for like if you want to buy a playset of like well Mana Drain or well yeah. Fluster Storm. But like if that's all your goal is, then you should just buy the singles because well, you shouldn't just. Open well, yeah, it. <laughs> but in a master set, you're wanting to get your money back and maybe open your thing. Oh, I see what so, you're you know, saying. Yeah, yeah. There's value there, but not this time around. Yeah, there's really not. That's I'm gonna buy a lot of this set. I don't recommend sure. buying a lot of this. You <laughs> shouldn't talk them out of it. No, I just want to. <laughs> okay. All right, Can I guys. These things? Uh, we have to thank our gracious sponsor one more our time. Our lovely, lovely sponsor. Grand Slam Beautiful. Comics Beautiful. and Collectibles. Guys, we really do appreciate them. They do a lot for us. We encourage you to go check them out. Uh, they do a lot Speak with Pokemon right the now. Devil. There off. you go. Um, we do have our goal cards with our Kraken Packs. Mine is the Itlamok, Growing Rights of Itlamok, I think is the actual card name. Uh, I didn't get it. Condish Tyrant would be mine. I did get a great card. So did I. Did I think you? that's the limited choice, I think. What, is, what was your rare? Angrath's you Marauders. If it's a human pirate, it's a 4-4 four, four for 7. It says if a source he control would deal damage to a permanent or player... It deals double that damage to that permanent player instead. Ooh, holy crap. Yeah, that's super good. Holy crap. Um, I oh, got Dire Fleet yeah. Ravager. <laughs> that's great. Which is 100% my pick. Yeah. Uh, it is a 4-4, four, 4-5, four, four, three and two black. Uh, it is a pirate, so it does have synergy in this set. Uh, but it has Menace and Death Touch. When it enters the battlefield, each player loses a third of his or her life rounded up. So, nuke everybody and then demolish. Dang. I mean, it's a great card. Menace and Death Touch is also fantastic. Um, <clears throat> honorable mentions: Water Trap Weaver is great. It's a great tempo play. Um, yeah, Jade Guardian's nice. Yeah, the only other card that I would be like super excited about, I did get a Thundering Spineback, which is a great oh, card. Yeah. Um, I also really like the Wanted Scoundrels. I found you that they're you not decided? terrible. Yeah, I kind of like them. Um, they're not my favorite card in the world, but I do like them. In turn two, though. How nice is that? Yeah, exactly. That's, I mean, that's the goal. Um, so yeah, Dire Fleet Ravager is my pick, though. Still no growing rights. It's been a long time since we've hit our gold cards. We need to get on it. Also, forget, too, because we originally did this and we were doing, like, four episodes a week. 
and so we technically would have gotten to them four times quicker like True. on average True. and so now we're just doing one episode spoiler alert we're only doing one episode a week and so <laughs> well one where we open yeah exactly set. and so it just takes a lot longer yeah that's okay it's discouraging i quit it's all about the anticip the anticip all right, um, guys. <laughs> Patient. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, I was working. Fun episode. <laughs> this has been that. such a rambling, just um, I need get stuff s- off our chest episode. <laughs> Final summation. Yeah. Don't buy Iconic Masters. Buy um, Goblins versus Merfolk instead. <laughs> it's way more fun. Yeah. Like nine times out of ten. <laughs> um, Modern is a weird format yeah. for cantrips. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay. All right. Oh, also, and tune in every week to watch our podcast. Oh, yeah. That's important. Self-promotion is important, by the way. <laughs> Here we are, and we're great. Um, <laughs> this, this latter half needs to be trimmed. Oh, no, it's perfect. Just fix it in post. Nope, it is perfect. <laughs> Guys, I think with that, we are finally going to get out of here instead of ramble in your ear even more. We do appreciate appreciate you guys sticking around, listening, or watching, however you're doing it. Uh, if you would like to see more of these, subscribe to us on YouTube. Also, if you icon. like this episode, <laughs> this rambly episode, go ahead and like and leave yeah. comments down below. Uh, with that, though, I think we're going to get out of here. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Resolves. We need outro.